down on Monday coming up this morning for you here on Daybreak. Welcome back into the show. It's Tuesday, January 28th. I'm Lauren Barnett. And I'm Joe Morano. And you heard Dan Lucy, if you watched last hour, say the media are the stars because they're kind of allowed mm -hmm. to do anything. Yeah. And that was Richard Sherman on the Irons. That was the player taking the pictures of the media. That's it's how crazy this is. It's a fun concept. Yeah. And uh, helping me get through this hump of just anxious for this weekend. That is true. That countdown just seems to linger on. But with each day that passes, we're getting closer. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. And everyone's looking forward to that forecast, Elisa. That'll be nice. We're looking at right now, though, at the moment. And uh, it's going to be cold before it gets warmer, right? I was going to say, I think you would have a ball at that opening night. I can see yeah. you just having a field day. My only <laughs> problem is that each team is only allowed an hour on the floor. Really? They have to That's leave. it? Yeah. Oh, man. You got to do a lot of work in 60 minutes. A lot minutes. of ground to cover. Right, Worth right. it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you're right. So we're starting out with some of that fog again this morning. Um, that dense fog advisory goes until 9 for Springfield and areas to the east and northeast again. So we're finding that visibility drop to a quarter mile or less at times in places like Lebanon and Mountain Grove. Uh, you can't really see outside of our camera in Springfield. It's 30 degrees on northerly winds. We've got that visibility down to two miles in Springfield, a half a mile in Camdenton, and near a quarter mile in Fort Leonard Wood and West Plains. So uh, temperatures also just below freezing, so there could be some frost or maybe freezing frog out there this morning. Uh, we're looking at that dense fog for your morning commute. We're fine, just dry, cloudy, and cold this afternoon, and then some wet roads by the evening commute as some rain showers move in. So by dismissal, you're probably dry. If you look to the south, you might start to get spit on. But we'll have those showers arrive by the evening commute with temperatures cold in the 30s. Then rain changes to snow tonight. Another winter weather advisory takes effect at 6 o'clock tonight. More details on snow totals coming up in a couple of minutes. He was a loving, caring, compassionate uh, son, brother, friend. Learning today new information about the discovery of 25 year old Alex Holden's body. He was a Springfield native who was living in Sacramento and was found a Sunday. The Parkview grad was found nearly a month after he went missing along a bike trail just north of downtown Sacramento. According to the family, detectives say his death was an accident and is not considered suspicious right now. An autopsy was performed yesterday, though, and according to his dad, Greene County Judge Calvin Holden, they should know the cause of death later this week. His father also says his son Alex was adventurous and all around a kind person. He filled every second of his life. When he wanted to do something, he threw himself into it. He started running, did a half marathon, marathon, and I was going to go out and watch him do a 100-mile race in uh, April. So um, he just, uh, he was open, gregarious, uh, wanted to make every second count. You know, one of his friends had told her dad that we've known forever that she had never heard Alex say anything bad about anybody. Judge Holden says the support in the search for Alex was tremendous. He will be traveling to Sacramento at the end of the week to bring home Alex's body. There will be a visitation February 7th at 425 West Walnut from 5 to 8 at night and a service the next day, Saturday the 8th at 2 p.m. at the venue's church. That service will also be broadcasted online for those who cannot make it. We turn to some medical coverage now for you this morning. Out of thousands of applications for medical marijuana dispensaries, only 192 were rewarded last week, and only one was approved in Branson. The first medical marijuana dispensary there is expected to be in this building that you see. It's located on the corner of Wildwood and Green Mountain Drive. Now, we don't know the name of the store yet, but the building used to be a Lone Star Steakhouse. Businesses in the area have had mixed reactions. Some say they're concerned about a dispensary being so close, but some also believe that it won't really be a problem at all. We also have a construction update on the new Cox Hospital in Monette. Yesterday, hospital leaders offered tours at the site along Highway 60 to show the progress made since the work began three months ago. Foundations are poured, walls are going up. Hospital leaders say the new location is built with growth in mind. Their new $42 million facility should be open sometime in 2020. Teens in the Ozarks are taking a stand against vaping. Yesterday at Republic High School, students held an event to educate others about it. Students learned about the damage the American Heart Association says vaping can do to a person's body. Then more than 1,400 students signed an open letter to tobacco companies demanding accountability in their marketing. It was all part 
of Quit Lying Day in association with Republic High and the American Heart Association. All right, at the end of the week, boy, we've got Super Bowl Sunday. That's a game with traditions that span years and decades, many of you likely attending parties of some sort. And, of course, those parties could include food, likely alcohol, which is one reason local law enforcement is encouraging you not to super drink and drive. Colorton's Nyjah McDonald joins us this morning with more on that message. Nyjah. Well, good morning, Joe and Lauren. As we all know, Super Bowl 54 is 50 years in the making for the Kansas City Chiefs. But Missouri State Highway Patrol says there are a few things you need to consider before your celebrations begin. The Kansas City Chiefs are in the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. It's our home team. You know, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. It's a big deal for us here in Missouri, um, and everybody's excited. But before you cheer on the home team, local law enforcement is urging you to establish a game plan. Some of those parties are going to involve alcohol and things that will impair you. And all that we all that we ask is that you don't take your party to the road. Carpenter says to designate your sober driver or safe way home before the party begins. That's the recipe for disaster in Missouri. You know, we don't want people involved in car crashes. We don't want you to impact somebody else and ruin somebody else's day, too. In 2018, there were more than 10,000 fatalities in motor vehicle traffic crashes involving drunk drivers. All the ride share programs that we have around Lyft, Uber. Carpenter says, we know there's going to be parties, and we encourage people to get together with friends and family and have fun and root the Chiefs on to victory. But Carpenter says friends don't let friends drive drunk. If you know someone who is about to drive while impaired, take their keys and help them make safe travel arrangements. If you're hosting a Super Bowl party this weekend, serve food and include non-alcoholic beverages at the party. Stop serving alcohol at the end of the third quarter of the game and begin serving things like coffee and dessert. Well, again, you can watch the Super Bowl on Fox at 5.30 p.m. this Sunday. All right, thank you, Nyjah. You saw some images there of Chiefs players taking in Super Bowl opening night. That's the time for all media to be able to get out and ask anyone anything. And because of that, they do not hold anything back. The Chiefs and the Niners <laughs> both took the podium and saw all of the characters that come out for media day. There certainly were a lot right there. We had media members doing magic tricks for some Chiefs players right there. Hey, we might have some magic for you <laughs> on Super Bowl Sunday. We may. Andy Reid in the Rams Uni. Please Google Andy Reid Rams uniform. <laughs> right? You, you'll see what it's we're talking about it. there. It's worth it. It's worth it. How about uh, our Chiefs mascot right now just shunning this media member from a high five? I like it. Shaking what his mama gave him. <laughs> all right. All <laughs> just a strange sight on Monday night for all the players out there. Uh, there's a Hungarian food quiz going around here. Yeah. Something to do with blood, pig, stew, and yeah. That's probably about it. How many of those did you get right? Zero. <laughs> can barely move in this place, and it's. It's really insane. I mean, it's the Super Bowl. I mean, you, you, you dream of this as a kid, and to be here, um, obviously as a practice squad. But I mean, it's still, it's, I mean, it's an awesome experience that all of us get to be here. Everyone's there. Kid reporters, any any media outlet. If you say you're part of that, okay. you might not get to go to the game, but you can at least have fun on Monday. That's right. And I I like that <laughs> Xavier was like, I don't know anything about blood pig stew. That. Puts more faith in the Chiefs, right. too. Just such a what, just is, what is that? Such a big <laughs> world event that you're getting yeah. asked Hungarian food questions. Good for them. All right. I don't know any Hungarian food. Elisa, do you? Probably not. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, we've got some patchy visibility on the Colorton Live Drive this morning. It's been going in and out because we have some of that patchy to locally dense fog. Two miles visibility right now in Springfield. Details on more snow for tonight coming up next.
Now weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. Good morning. We're starting out with another dense fog advisory that goes until 9. It includes Springfield and areas to the north and to the northeast, like Rolla, Salem, Mount Grove, and Lake of the Ozarks. This is where we're finding that visibility drop to a quarter mile or less at times. So you give yourself some extra time this morning. Use those headlights even after the sun comes up and leave some extra space between you and the car in front of you. This is why it's hard to see out there 30 degrees right now in Springfield. We've got uh, visibility down to two miles. In Springfield, a half a mile in Camdenton, and about a quarter mile in Fort Leonard Wood and West Plains. Again, this is the area where that fog is most dense. Temperatures are a little bit below freezing. It's 28 degrees in Fort Leonard Wood and in Rolla, 30 in Springfield, and a pair of threes in Ava. We're mostly cloudy out there this morning, and uh, no rain or no snow yet, right? We're not really expecting that until later on today. Our storm system is still turning over the Texas panhandle. And it will track just to our south, right? But as it's moving east and northeast, we'll start to find some of these rain showers poking their head into our area by later on this afternoon and evening from the south and southwest. Now, the issue is, is this storm doesn't really have long legs when it comes to the warm air. It's really confined near the center of the storm. And we have this Canadian high pressure that's being a big supplier of the cold air. So as we start to get these rain showers to sneak their way in on the overnight, as things get even colder, we'll find that rain changing to snow, which is why we've got winter weather advisories starting at 6 o'clock tonight and going until noon tomorrow. They include Springfield and areas to the north, generally north of Highway 60 here. So that bottom last row county is not included. I expect mostly a cold rain, especially in Arkansas there. So with the snow impacts, we're looking at uh, maybe a slick morning commute tomorrow. Use some extra caution and extra time. Again, we're mostly cloudy today. Temperatures in the 30s. Those rain showers arrive from the south. Then on the overnight, we'll find that cold air Mean it, changing the rain to snow down to about Branson. And then we'll have a slushy morning commute, some of those snow showers through the first half of the day, and then they clear in the afternoon. The clouds hang tight and temperatures stay cold in the 30s. About a dusting of snow possible as far south as Branson, nothing in Arkansas. And we're looking at about one to two inches of snow from Springfield and areas up to the north. It might be a little bit of a slushy snow because those temperatures will be just below freezing. So again, showers arrive from the south and west late this evening. They change overnight to snow as far south as the state line with mostly a rain in Arkansas. About one to two inches of a slushy snow by tomorrow morning's commute. The snow exits by the evening commute and we stay pretty cold and cloudy. 37 today with those rain showers arriving late. 30 overnight, generally snow in Missouri and rain in northern Arkansas is what we can expect. 36 degrees tomorrow, some snow early. We stay pretty cloudy and cold. Uh, Thursday and Friday uneventful, just cloudy and a little bit chilly with those temperatures in the 40s. We get some really strong southerly flow this weekend with sunshine. We're looking at highs in the 50s on Saturday and then maybe even some lower 60s for Super Bowl Sunday. That is going to be a treat. You can have your own football game outside before yeah. you watch the game inside, right? It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, After not all too the, bad. Before all the food will be eating. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Only time for one celebrity birthday today. Here's who's celebrating, though. Mr. Elijah Wood. You see him from Lord of the Rings, of course. Yeah. Wilfred, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. How old do you guys think he is? I think he looks younger than his age, though. I think so, too. I think that's always yeah. been a thing with him. He probably has a good skincare routine. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 36. Forty-five. Thirty-five. Ah. <laughs> Thirty-nine. Wow. Look at that. That was a shock. She acts like she's so confused and then nails it right there. Happy birthday to Elijah and to our viewers at home celebrating. We have Kevin Barnell. Happy birthday, Chris Dunbar, Rita Darst, and then I jumped the gun on Marlo, who works for us yesterday. I was just so excited about your birthday, Marlo. So happy birthday for realsies. So nice. You put the birthday twice. No problem. Yeah. Right. All right, if you want your special day announced, send it on over to birthdays at color10.com. Stay with us, everyone. Sports is up next.
now, sports on Color 10 News. Welcome back, everyone. The Missouri Sports Hall of Fame inducted its class of 2020 yesterday, and two of the newest members actually have a vested interest in the Super Bowl this weekend. Mizzou product Justin Smith spent 14 seasons in the NFL, seven of them with the Niners, and he actually played in Super Bowl 47 when San Fran fell to Baltimore. Derek Johnson, meanwhile, played 13 seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs, and he's proud that his former coach and owner are finally in that promised land of the Super Bowl. I want to be actually preparing to help them, uh, but this time I'll be coaching from the from the couch, and uh, I, I'll, I, I'm very proud of them. We just met up uh, a couple hours ago, and uh, you know we had a, a few bets, some push-ups here and there, but uh, uh, he, he's he, he's got a good team uh, going to the uh, to the championship, and so do so do we do. I mean, he's going to have to do them because uh, I don't see. I mean, the Niners are for real, man. I don't see uh, anybody beating them, so we'll see how it goes. Inspiration to so many, including. All right, Super Bowl push-up bet, not bad, right? I love. Yeah, no, and I love how he said he was coaching from the couch. I feel like a lot of people do that, you know. <laughs> yeah, and Derek Screaming Johnson at the TV. is representing so many former Chiefs players that are so happy to be be there and see that right now. So of course that's Sunday. Got to get through Tuesday first, all right? That dense fog advisory is still happening in our northern area, huh? Yeah, it still goes until 9 o'clock this morning where that visibility is uh, dropping to a quarter mile or less. It does include Springfield and Camdenton and Rolla. Uh, hard to see outside of the camera this morning. Again, that visibility is just uh, dropping 30 degrees in Springfield right now. Down to a quarter mile visibility in West Plains and your quarter mile in Fort Leonard Wood and at a quarter mile in Camdenton as well. Temperatures are just at or below freezing. It's 30 in Springfield and 30 in Camdenton. So use those headlights this morning for that fog even after the sunrise. We'll have temperatures staying cold today in the 30s with clouds. Uh, probably showers after dismissal, I think. Uh, if you're to the south, you might have some of those uh, spitting showers that you buy dismissal. But uh, the bigger story will be the rain changing over to snow tonight. Another winter weather advisory takes effect at 6 o'clock tonight. Again, we'll find that rain coming in from the south later on today and into tonight. Rain changes to snow overnight, probably as far south as about Branson. We'll find some snow showers tomorrow morning and early in the afternoon. They clear later on in the day, but we'll have temperatures in the 30s with clouds. So about a dusting of snow probably to the state line, about one to two inches of snow around Springfield, and it's probably going to be a slushy snow because those temperatures will stay just a hair below freezing. So we're looking at a slick and slushy morning commute possible. He was an inspiration to so many, including me. I grew up watching him. Fans continue to mourn the loss of a basketball legend, and investigators are now looking for answers as to why this chopper crash. We'll have more on that when we come back.
Welcome back, everyone. Federal investigators are still searching for answers following the devastating helicopter crash that killed NBA legend Kobe Bryant, his 13 year old daughter, and seven others. Search and recovery teams retrieved three bodies from that wreckage yesterday as fans continue to mourn today. Marin Austin has our story from Los Angeles. Federal investigators are painstakingly examining the massive debris field outside Los Angeles, where the helicopter carrying Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and several others went down Sunday. A piece of the tail is down the hill on the left side of the hill. The fuselage is over on the other side of, of that hill. The helicopter took off at 9.06 a.m., headed for a basketball tournament in nearby Thousand Oaks, when it ran into thick fog. Two Echo X ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. The pilot did not signal distress, but told air traffic controllers he was climbing to avoid a cloud layer before slamming into a hillside. We'll be looking at other avionics on the aircraft to see what information we can gather, and then we're going to be looking for. Uh, other electronics. As the investigation continues, thousands of mourners and fans gathered here at the Staples Center, the house that Kobe built. He was an inspiration to so many, including me. I grew up watching him. Several landmarks, including the Empire State Building, lit up in purple and gold Monday night. The colors Bryant wore in his 20 year career with the Los Angeles Lakers. NBA star LeBron James, who recently surpassed Bryant's all time scoring record, issued this heartfelt post on Instagram, promising to continue his legacy. Marin Austin, CBS News, Los Angeles. There was no black box on board, but officials hope to examine the flight tools on the pilot's iPad. Tonight's game between the Lakers and Clippers at the Staples Center has been postponed. It is the bottom of the hour. So up next, we have the top three stories you need to know if you're just waking up. And a different forecast, especially those temperatures today than yesterday. Elisa will break it down as well. Good morning. My name is Ben. I go to Weaver Elementary School. Today is January 28th, and the lunch menu is breaded chicken parmesan, spaghetti, hot dog on a bun, green beans, and fresh apple slices. Bye.
now weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. If you're just waking up with us, we've got a dense fog advisory in effect. We're expecting rain arriving late today, and then a winter weather advisory takes effect again for another round of some slushy snow. There's the dense fog advisory. goes until 9, includes Springfield and counties to the east and northeast. Visibility is down to 2 miles in Springfield, a quarter mile in Camdenton, and a half a mile in Fort Leonard Woods. So just be careful driving out there this morning. Temperatures are a little bit cold again, 30 degrees in Springfield and 30 degrees in Mountain Grove. So at the bus stop, it's foggy again this morning, 30 degrees there. By dismissal, temperatures still cold in the 30s with those rain showers arriving late. Then here's the winter weather advisory. It takes effect at 6 o'clock tonight. Details on the snow forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. All right, thank you, Elisa. We have the top three things you need to know if you're just waking up this morning. Making news locally, we're learning new information about the body of 25 year old Springfield native Alex Holden, which was found in Sacramento on Sunday. Detectives say his death was an accident and that it is not suspicious. An autopsy was performed yesterday, and according to his father, Judge Holden, they will know the cause in, later this week. There will be a visitation on February 7th at 425 West Walnut from 5 to 8 p.m. and a service the next day, Saturday, February 8th at 2 p.m. at the venue's church. Regionally for you, a woman was killed while running from police in Arkansas. Sergeant Tony Murphy with Fayetteville PD says officers responded for a welfare check. A caller reported they were concerned for people living in a tent just off a local trail. When officers arrived, they tried to speak to the woman who ran away from officers into traffic. She was hit by a vehicle and killed. Nationally for you, President Trump is expected to reveal a plan for peace to the Middle East today. He'll announce the plan alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who visited the White House yesterday for private meetings. According to the Washington Post, the plan includes redrawing the border between Israel and the West Bank to incorporate Jewish settlements. It would also reportedly allow Israel to keep control over the territory that it seized in 1967. All right, Joe, thank you for a look at today's top three. We are also following some news out of Maryland. Maryland, where a handcuffed suspect has been shot and killed by a police officer overnight. Authorities say the suspect was buckled into the front passenger seat of a police cruiser. The officer then got into the driver's seat. Two independent witnesses told police they either saw or heard a struggle and also heard loud bangs coming from the cruiser. The suspect was shot multiple times and killed. An investigation is underway. Another investigation is happening after a U.S. military aircraft crashed in the Afghanistan's Ghazani pro province. Images from the crash site show smoke rising from the charred airplane. U.S. sources say the plane was used as a communications link between troops in the field to headquarters. While the cause is under investigation, the U.S. military says there is no indication that the plane was gunned down by enemy fire. U.S. officials are not providing any additional information about the crash. And the U.S. is preparing to evacuate Americans from Wuhan, China, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. The death toll from the virus has surpassed 100 in China, and there are more than 4,500 confirmed cases there. We also want to bring you a market watch right now. Here is how your markets finished yesterday. The Nikkei closed down 127 points. The Dow with a big drop down 453.